In this lesson, we're going to look at the memory map for an MCU. And as a specific example, the STM32 MCU, which we're using in this course. This memory map will be a lot like memory maps for other MCUs. Now, it's difficult with topics like this to know at what level to start. At the begin beginning of the course, I said it would be good to have some knowledge of computer concepts. So I'll assume you know the, the concepts of memory addresses. If not, I suggest you Google address space and read some of the articles. There's a pretty good Wikipedia article on it. So I'll start with the concept of memory mapped I.O. This is critical to understanding memory maps of any computing system, tiny or, or large. I'll then continue digging into memory mapped I.O. by looking at peripheral registers. Then we will look at the full memory map for the MCU used in this course. As part of that, we'll look at some very special memory locations, such as the reset vector and the interrupt vector table. Now let's talk about memory mapped I.O. When reading and writing data within a computer, you might think of two scenarios. Scenario one is reading or writing memory used to store data. For example, you might read program instructions from flash memory as you execute the program, or you write the value of a variable into RAM and later read it back. The second scenario is reading or writing something more physical than memory. So we use the term I.O. for this. So the I.O. could be an LED that you turn on and off. Or it could be a UART that sends and receives data over a serial connection. So to be clear, when you write I.O., you're not trying to store data. Instead, you are trying to do something more physical. In the same way, when you read I.O., you're not trying to read a value that was previ previously stored. You're trying to get something uh, more physical, like tell if a button was pressed on a keyboard. For some types of I.O., only reading or only writing makes sense. For example, it makes no sense to write a value to a keyboard. So how do we deal with these two scenarios of, mem of memory and I.O.? I'll give two approaches. In approach one, you can view memory and I.O. as fundam fundamentally different. And I can understand this way of thinking. When you read or write memory, you have to specify its memory address. And when you read or write I.O., you have to specify uh, some kind of I.O. address. These two kinds of addresses are completely different. You would say that memory and I.O. have different address uh, spaces. You would probably also have different um, machine instructions to access memory I.O. because it's different it's a different thing you're doing. The first CPU uh, I used in my career, the Intel 8085, supported this concept and x86 CPUs still do today. Now in approach two, you can sort of view memory and I.O. as being a lot alike. In both cases you read or write data and in both cases you have to give some kind of address. So you could design the computer to make I.O. look the same as memory, including having memory addresses. So memory address X might be for actual RAM memory, but memory address Y might be used to turn an LED on and off. This is memory mapped I.O. It's a powerful abstraction as it unifies the worlds of memory and I.O. It can also make software easier to design. Now I should point out that just because a system supports a separate I.O. address uh, space, you can still do memory mapped I.O. In fact, that's what we did for that 8085 system I just mentioned. When we use memory mapped I.O., the terms memory address, memory map, and so on can become slightly confusing. That's because I.O. address or I.O. devices have memory addresses and are in the memory map but they really aren't memory. They are just things like timers and UARTs. But it's okay. We know what we mean and we get used to it. And there is a term that helps a little. For I.O., the term register uh, 
is often used to identify the thing that you are reading and writing for I.O. So for example, a UART will have a number of registers, each with its own memory address. You might write a register to set the baud rate of the UART, and you might read a register to get the data received by the UART over the serial line. Now I want to go back to the peripherals that we discussed in the lesson on MCU architecture, but this time in the context of memory mapped I.O. Here's an abstract uh, diagram of a peripheral. And as before, you can see that it is connected to the uh, system bus. It has some uh, I.O. signals that connect down to the pin mux. And it has an interrupt output that goes to the interrupt controller. Inside the peripheral, we see a set of registers that um, are read and written by the MCU software. These registers are used to operate whatever it is that this peripheral does. So if the peripheral was a timer, reading and writing these registers would be how you operate the timer. Because we are using memory mapped I.O., each of these registers has a memory address. And what is normally done is to have a base memory address for the peripheral and then an offset for each of these registers. So the address of a particular register would be this base address plus this offset. In this case, I assume that every register is 32 bits or four bytes. And that means the offsets between the registers are four bytes. And that's why these offsets are uh, multiples of four bytes, starting with zero. Now, if you know the C language well, you might notice that the set of registers looks like an array, or maybe you think of it as a data structure, and you would be right. And in fact, we often use C arrays or structures to model a peripheral's registers when programming in C. We'll see more about that in later lessons. Now I'd like to give a concrete example of peripheral registers. This figure comes from the MCU reference manual and shows the registers for USART. This figure is called a register map, which is like a mini version of a memory map, but just for a single peripheral. These are 32-bit registers, as indicated by these bit numbers going from 0 to 31. 32 bits means each register is 4 bytes, which is why the offsets in this column are multiples of 4. Now for each register, you can see what the different uh, bits mean. Of course, these are just abbreviations. You'd need to look at the reference manual to get the full description. And you'll notice that a number of bits of each register are grayed out, meaning these bits are not used. I'm not going to go through these registers in detail, but would like to talk about a few to give you an idea. The first register, um, USAR underscore SR, um, the SR stands for status register. It tells you what's going on inside the USART. It uses 10 bits, and the bits will indicate things like if there is a received byte from the serial link that is ready to be read, or if there is space to write a byte for transmission on the serial line, or to say if some error has been detected by the USART. The second register is the data register. When you read it, you get the character that's been received on the USART receive line. When you write it, you cause data to be written on the USART transmit line. As I just described, the status register will tell you whether there is incoming data available to be uh, read and whether the USART is ready to transmit a byte. The rest of these registers are used to configure um, the USART, things like the baud rate, the number of bits per character, etc. Now, to write software to operate this UART, you need one more thing. You need the base address of these registers. And because the MCU has several USARTs, you need a base address for each one. You will usually find uh, base addresses 
in either the MCU data sheet or the MCU reference manual. For this MCU, I think these addresses are actually in both documents. Anyhow, I listed them below. I'll point out that the, the, the numbering of these USARTs is sort of odd, 1, 2, and 6. Um, that might make sense when you look at all of the uh, MCUs in this family. But in any case, those are the USARTs on, MC, on our MCU, and those are the addresses. Now that we understand memory mapped I.O., we're ready to look at the memory map for the MCU. This diagram, which comes from the data sheet, is a little intimidating, so we'll take it a piece at a time. First of all, the MCU has 32-bit addresses, so the number of bytes in the memory map is 2 to the 32nd power, which is 4 gigabytes. In hex, the maximum address would be 8 Fs. The left column in this figure shows the entire address space, and then certain parts of it are magnified in the second and third columns to give you more detail. So we see that the memory map on the left starts at 0 and goes up to 8 Fs. This is the 4 gigabytes. I'm not going to walk through everything in detail, but just give some highlights of this diagram. So if we look at the second column, we can see that flash starts at 0800 0000. I'm not sure if you can read these addresses. At address 1FFF0000, we see system memory. Now, system memory is something we won't cover in this course, but it is some built-in software that allows you to program the flash over the serial link, for example. About half of the system on chips that I've uh, used had some built-in software like this. The SRAM, or RAM, is located at 2000, 000. The peripheral registers, which use memory mapped I.O., are in these uh, large white blocks in the third column. We'll look at these in detail in a minute. Now, an important part of the memory map is the reset vector. The term vector is just a fancy name of an address of some code. So you could say it is a pointer to that code. So the reset vector memory location holds an address or a pointer of where the MCU should start executing code on power up. For this MCU, the reset vector is stored at address four, which is nearly at the bottom here. Besides the reset vector, there is a table of interrupt or uh, vectors used for interrupts. So the idea is that for every type of interrupt, there is a memory location that holds the address of the code to handle that interrupt. With this MCU, like others, the interrupt vector table comes right after the reset uh, vector down here. Now, this particular MCU has an advanced feature that allows you to decide which memory you want to appear at address zero. I'm not going to cover this feature. You can just assume for this course that flash memory appears at address zero. Now, it might bother you that flash memory appears at two different addresses, down here at address zero and here at address 0800 000. But don't worry. This is an easy thing to do in hardware design. The same flash memory uh, is accessed regardless of which address range you are using. This slide gives more details on some of that third column from the last slide, the column that was for peripheral registers. In this slide, you can see exactly where the peripheral registers are found in the address space. I'll pick out a few things to describe. Now down here are registers for GPIO. Uh, for port A, they start at 4002000. There are registers used to configure what each pin in, in a port is connected to. In other words, the pin mapping. There are also registers used to configure the GPIO electrical configuration, such as whether uh, pull-up or pull-down resistors should be inserted. 
For pins that are used for actual GPIO, there are registers to read and write the pin values, one or zero. If we continue to look um, on, we see some DMA here, uh, timers, there's some SPI buses, analog to digital converter, and some USARTs. Um, this isn't the entire table, but the, the remaining por par portion of it is uh, similar to this. Now, one thing you might notice, say for the USARTs, the register map I showed you had seven registers for a USART. Each was four bytes, so that's 28 bytes. But this table shows 1,024 bytes for each uh, USART. This means there's a lot of unused addresses. Now this is typical because there's plenty of address space, four gigabytes, and it is easier in hardware design to allocate uh, larger blocks to peripherals. Now you might wonder, what if I try to access those unassigned addresses? Well, you won't get anything useful and you'll probably get a hard uh, fault interrupt, so be careful. Well, that's it for memory maps and memory mapped I.O. Thanks again for watching.